My name is Roger, and this is Ashley. And today, uh, we're going to be showing you the steps that we take to make a rain barrel. This particular barrel here costs about $50. We do have a fact sheet that is available. It has all the materials. Um, it has the different tools that you'll need and the steps to follow along if you want to build this barrel at home. So let's get started. What we look for when we look at a rain barrel, we want something that's going to be durable, that can last, uh, that can stand up to weather, and we're looking for a thick walled material, and uh, we want something that has access to the bottom of the barrel. So we also want something that's dark in color that will hold down on light. Uh, we don't want a lot of algae growth inside the barrel and the big concern for that is it may affect the spigot or the outflow as time goes on. You just want to make sure that it's a food grade barrel yes. and if you use a barrel that's been used for something previously you want to make sure that whatever was stored in the barrel before is not toxic to plants, animals. The best way to tell if a barrel is food grade is to know who you are getting the barrel from. So um, we purchased the pickle barrel, so they told us that you know pickles were stored in it before. This barrel was donated, and um, the person who donated it told us what was in the barrel, and it also had a label on the barrel, what was in it previously. We need a, we need a jigsaw, we need some snips, a pair of scissors, pipe wrench, safety glasses. We've got a couple of different size hole saws here. We got a uh, two and three eighths and a one and five eighths. Paddle bit, a crescent wrench. Of course, we'll probably need a screwdriver, sharpie, some Teflon tape, a saw, electric drill. And we, and we also have this flashlight that we'll be using. And this is a little jig that we made. It, it's, it's a compass, and you'll see how this comes into play a little bit later. Here are some of the uh, materials we'll be using. Uh, this is a two inch female adapter, PVC schedule 40. Uh, you got a two inch O-ring. You have a two inch threaded male adapter, PVC schedule 40. A small piece of schedule 40 PVC pipe. You'll have a uh, 45 degree two inch PVC elbow. Again, with another piece of PVC pipe. And this is a 22 and a half degree uh, two inch elbow PVC that we'll be using. We'll be gluing these up uh, along with this piece of two inch PVC pipe. This will be a, the uh, internal overflow device and we'll be talking more about that in a little bit later. Uh, we'll also be using one half inch bulkhead fitting and we'll be installing that. Uh, inside the bulkhead fitting we'll be putting this half inch brass a spigot and then we'll also be using this aluminum screen. This will be we'll be using it on the top of the barrel and also on the top of this uh, standpipe to uh, eliminate the uh, the infestation of, of mosquitoes. Taking a look at the, the different types of barrels, we've taken a look at the tools and the materials, now we're going to actually get into the, the construction of the rain barrel. Uh, the first thing that we want to do is, uh, on this particular barrel, since it has a screw top, we want to take the top off, and so the easiest way i found is to kind of set it on the side, straddle it, loosen it up, take it off, set this ring off to the side, Next thing you're going to notice is it's got this top like this that's solid. We want to take it out. It looks something like this. Got a gasket around the edge. And then in the bottom of the barrel, you can see there's a grate. And that's important because we're going to be using that. So I'm going to, we need to get that out. Occasionally, uh, these barrels uh, will not show up with this grate and in the event that they don't, you can use this particular design here where you just go and you cut a series of holes in the top 
and then put your screen on top like this. That's if you do not have this, but most of the time this will be in the bottom of this particular barrel. First thing we're going to do is we're going to work on the top of the barrel. Is I'm going to cut out this center part here. So we're going to run our saw just right around that ridge. We're going to cut this piece out. After you make these cuts, sometimes there's some burrs on the side, on the edges here. You can just kind of take it and scrape them off. We want to take our grate. This is where we use our little compass and our Sharpie. We put that in right there and we find the center. This is about seven and a half inches from the center out to the marker. You set it on the center and then you take your marker what I'm measuring here is the, the distance. I need to trim this off so it will set inside this frame over here. Okay. And we've cut this out. If we've done everything right, this will fit right inside. We'll put the, the screen uh, on top of that to keep the mosquitoes out. And this is Here's the other design where you just leave it solid, drill holes, and then put your screen on top. What we're getting ready to do is put screen on top of this right here. And the only reason we do this, resort to this, is because we don't have this grate in the bottom of the barrel. But 95% of the time, the barrels that we get always have this grate in the, in the bottom. And then you set that right on there, keep mosquitoes out. And then, then it looks something like that. So that's the top part of the barrel. The next thing you want to do is we're gonna go ahead and work on the uh, overflow portion of the barrel. Uh, what I like to do is try to find the best side on the barrel. They're, they're usually about the same. Um, and then what I'm going to do, uh, there's actually a seam on this barrel, and I, I don't want to drill a hole in the seam. I don't know if that would affect anything, but I'd always like to find a solid. You can see the seam running right down through here. So what I'm going to go do is go between these handles. And so what I'm going to do is come down to right about here and drill a hole for the overflow. On the overflow, you need the uh, 2 and 3 8 hole saw. I'm going to put the, the hole for the spigot in now. You can put the spigot you know, anywhere. Uh, I'm putting it kind of in close proximity to the overflow because I'm going under the assumption that both of these are going to be on the front end of the barrel. This is one and five eighths. This is two and three eighths. Okay, now, now we're going to assemble the overflow uh, assembly and uh, the length of this pipe here, we've, it's already been pre-cut and measured, and it's to a point in this barrel that we're going to be working on to where it, it'll be standing in a vertical position. We want it up high enough to where it's catching overflow, but not, not too, uh, too high where it will not catch enough and not too low where it's you know, affecting the overall volume of your, of your rain. So this is probably about two and a half inches, I mean two and a half feet. Take this piece. I want to line these up, twist them a little bit, and I'm going to make sure I get these seams running the same. That way they're all in the same plane. Two inch male adapter. Put it on and give it a twist. Slide it over the threads like that. This is an internal overflow assembly. What we're going to be doing, we're going to be putting this bulkhead, it's got a reverse thread. So in other words, when you, it's not lefty-loosey. When you do a left turn on this one, you're actually tightening, tightening it up. Uh, but this is what it looks like. This is going to go on the outside. We're going to push it through that hole. 
This will be on the inside. I'll put the gasket up next to the, the, the interface of the barrel, and then I'm going to tighten it with, with this nut. So we'll take this, place it up here. You just kind of hold that because I'm going to. Yeah, I'm going to kind of. I'm going to crawl in here. I've got that hand tight. Put it on. Kind of give them a little. All right, so now we've got the overflow assembly put together and we're going to attach it now. So I'm going to. snug and then when you what happens when you come up here it, it, odds are the pipe will be like that but don't there's no there's no need to panic when it's that way in fact you can you could probably even leave it that way or you know you just you just take it rotate it up like that you should be good to go before we go any further, what we want to do is we want to keep mosquitoes from flying up, coming up the, the tube, and then coming into the water. So the next thing we need to do is put a screen over the top of that, like that. Then you snug it up. And then what I like to do is take it off and just do it like one more notch. because that really makes it good and snug because you don't want that screen coming off and you don't want mosquitoes. And that'll hold it like that and you can cut the excess off. Now it's time to put your top back on. Take this piece you cut out earlier. Set it in like that. Take your grate. Sits in here, screen, keep mosquitoes out, like that. And you put your lid back on. Snug it down. That's what you got. Here we have just a typical downspout, and we're going to put this barrel with this, uh, with this downspout. Uh, the first thing you need to do is uh, remove the splash block out of the way. Then you need to get something to elevate it on before you get your measurement. So we'll set this right here. We want the barrels to be this high up off the ground. Next, you set your barrel up here. And then you look at this, where you are here, and you realize that you want the uh, downspout to come out over the barrel. We're going to cut a, a new piece at this distance right here. Then you have a piece that you've cut based on the length that you've taken over there and the height of the, of the base. And uh, now we're ready to put our downspout, I mean our uh, splash block back into place because we don't want water building up around the foundation of the house. We want to get it, get it away from the house. And so we'll put the splash block here. This is an option that you can do for those, because if you had a real heavy, heavy flow, it'd just shoot right on out. This way you can direct it down to the, to the splash block and then away from the house. <laughs> 